Hello, I'm Henk Ovink, Special Envoy for International Water Affairs for the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And I start with this image of the blue marble, because I want to talk about water with you. And this shows, this image shows uh, the world in its full capacity and vulnerability. And it's blue, eh? not for nothing. Eh? 70% of the world's surface is covered with water. But if that seems like a lot, but it actually is not a lot. If I take all the water of our planet and put it back into a sphere, so lakes, rivers, aquifers, and so forth, it turns out to be actually a very small bubble, uh, not even the size of the United States. And you see three blue dots, and the smallest one, 0.4% of all that water that we have, is only ready for human consumption. And that is for, of course, energy, food production and drinking, but also for better health. And we know in the context of the pandemic that water is a first line of defense. Eh? Eh? Wash your hands, this is what we say, but with over 2 billion people in the world not having access to that water, nor to sanitation facilities, nor to hygiene facilities, Water for them turns out to be uh, um, not the first line of defense because it's unreachable. But it's not only water and the pandemic, it's everything that makes the most vulnerable and the most vulnerable places more vulnerable. It's climate, gender, water, conflict, uh, uh, slums, GDP gap, health, etc. Crisis all aggregated shows a planet where the most vulnerable with this pandemic are becoming more vulnerable and more exposed. So these crises are interlinked and only by looking at them holistically can we come up with solutions that can address these challenges together. Eh? Uh, this current COVID-19 crisis and nature are linked eh? we see a biodiversity uh, decline and loss. So the recovery should also focus on this match between nature, biodiversity and health. Climate change and the, and the pandemic are also linked. So while we invest in this pandemic and recover, we also have to focus on how to invest in climate mitigation and adaptation strategies. And water is a critical part of all these challenges and opportunities of health, biodiversity, climate. And we see it, 90% eh? of all disasters around the world are water related. 2018 with floods, droughts and wildfires, 2019, with floods, droughts and wildfires, and yes, 2020, again, floods, uh, droughts and wildfires all over the place. So we have a problem and we know we have a problem. And just before the pandemic, it was every Friday, uh, the day to protest and call for climate action. Uh, and we know with this pandemic, there is no way back. There is only a way forward. Uh, but how can we help change the world? Secretary General Guterres says, this is the time of action, but also the time of science and solidarity, of thinking, of understanding, and of partnerships, empathy, and collaboration. Let's start with understanding. Okay, three reports, a 1.5 report, an ocean and cryosphere report, and a climate change and land report, all by the IPCC. They tell us what the urgency is of climate action, and that 1.5 degree warmer world is much better than a two degree warmer world. They tell us that our oceans are rising faster than estimated, and that our economies, our communities, but also our environment are becoming critical vulnerable to these ra raising sea levels and the climate that is changing. But the middle report is critical important. It tells us that the development of our planet, so what we do as humans, eh, our investments in agriculture, cities, rural and, and urban context, eh, the investments, the development of our planet is making sure that there is more climate change eh, by emissions, CO2 and so forth. So we make us more vulnerable with every dollar we spend. And at the same time, the way we invest and where we invest, so uh, how we plan our cities and economies and where we plan our cities and economies, is also in the wrong way and in the worst places. So it's not only that we increase climate change, we increase our vulnerability. So this is like a double uh, whammy when it comes to how to spend our, our funding right. And we see it in the gap report that we're off track, we're not moving towards this 1.5 degree world. And of course, we see it in the impact. More floods and droughts occur over every year, and they're happening everywhere. But there's a 
vulnerability aspect to that because these floods are not democratic. While they occur everywhere, the impact on communities are actually very concentrated, driving people uh, uh, from their homes, their livelihoods, uh, and uh, uh, pushing migration numbers up. And it's the cities where we invest in that are actually uh, most vulnerable to where climate change is hitting. And it is also that we tend to urbanize faster in the places that are already risky, along our coast and along our rivers. And this comes to why the uh, in investment capital in our city is more at risk uh, in the next decades. Eh? Trillions of dollars at risk. We have lists of cities that hit the bar of 200 or uh, almost 300 billion dollars at risk. Miami leading that list. And the World Bank and the OECD estimate that there's a trillion dollar at risk every year, a cost uh, every year, not let alone the risk. Now, there's a financial aspect, there's inequality to that, because the most vulnerable also in these cities live in the most vulnerable places. There's a health cost coming with that, because climate change actually is increasing health uncertainties. And of course, there's an environmental aspect with a biodiversity loss that is only increasing. Yeah, the sixth extinction. Uh, and in the heart of all these challenges uh, is the water uh, uh, challenge. Yeah? With its too much, too little and too polluted, uh, driving these challenges uh, forward, increasing them. But at the same time, water uh, can also be part of that solution, yeah? mitigating the risk and adapting for a better future. But for that, we have to look at that future more holistically, more comprehensively, more sustainably. Because what's happening now, if we look ahead, uh, we only replicate the mistakes of the past. Eh? There are business cases for that infrastructure of yesterday, financial economic business cases with short term returns. Uh, but with every dollar spent, we make ourselves more vulnerable. Not for nothing, only five years ago, we drafted 17 sustainable development goals, a holistic agenda for the world, not to cherry pick from, not to say, oh, I'll champion three or eight or 15. No, this is a holistic set. We have to take on comprehensively. We agreed on a Paris Agreement also five years ago. So we have a pathway towards the future. We have a commitment. The only thing is that we have to deliver on that promise. But the world shows that the business as usual that we have in our hand is not only not enough, it's becoming lethal. So instead of continuing with our non-responsive approaches, investing in stupid infrastructure, uh, moving sometimes in a reactive, let's build back better approach, as you see now also in the context of this, this pandemic, uh, that builds back a little better, prepares us not for the future, but still responds to the past. We have to become radically proactive. Uh, uh, move, don't go from crisis to crisis, but in a holistic manner, drive uh, a catalytic project uh, forward to really build resiliency and sustainability in our society. But that demands that we start with the people, eh? investing in people, the millions of the enabling environment to capacitate them to implement and deliver on the projects we need. Eh? It's the enabling environment, the capacity that we need. And we know from an economic perspective that if we do that, we not only maximize opportunities, we also maximize their impact. And water is the enabler for that. Eh? Investing in water has a trickle-down effect across all the SDGs. Eh? Well, better uh, equality, better gender opportunities, better economic performance, more urban resilience, uh, food security, uh, energy security, infrastructures that sustainable uh, uh, nature and nature-based solutions, increasing our biodiversity and so forth and so forth and so forth. Investing in water turns water as a leverage for sustainable development. But that means that we have to look at it from a holistic perspective, integrate needs and opportunities, work with everybody inclusively across all scales and interest and take a long-term perspective, a sustainable perspective. Long-term comprehensive plans need short-term and innovative projects. In inclusive collaborations and through a transparent approach, we can build capacity institutionally as well as individually. Uh, and we need design and planning to inspire. Right? We need the innovations to actually spur actions. Why? Why? 
One, we need solutions that are innovative, catalytic and pragmatic uh, that help spur actions. But we also need the solutions that are comprehensive, that have the capacity to connect across scales, times and interest, across real needs. And these solutions better be aspirational and inspirational if we really want to deliver on the promise of the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreement, we have to move mountains and changing course will demand uh, that inspiration, that political and societal capital that design can bring. And that means that we have to invest in each other. We have to invest in building trust. We have to invest in the process of bringing people together that might disagree, but because they come together in a safe and soft space, there is this opportunity to invest in each other and create opportunities that really add value. I did this with Rebuild by Design post Hurricane Sandy for the Obama administration. We brought together in a safe place and building trust the talent of the world with the talent of the region across all needs and interests by real inclusive leadership. This, is the, this part of building coalitions and alliances is also the culture of the Netherlands and how we deal with water. Dating back over 900 years, we built institutional capacity for safe drinking water, for protection on our coast, for increasing the capacity of our rivers, opening up our streets nowadays to ensure that the water can come, can come in and go back to the aquifer, our natural resources, but also with plans and programs. A Delta commissioner that leads a program that helps us to be ready for the future, plan our cities accordingly uh, and protect and be, uh, be ready for responses. This is also the, the culture that brings me to the world, eh? where we have a policy ambition that looks at the world internationally, where I go to places to build awareness, help build capacity in the context of disasters, and of course, drive innovations across the world. This is where we focus on finance and innovative finance with coalitions across the world with financial partners and government to government uh, uh, partnerships uh, in the deltas that we focus on. Uh, driving the leadership of the world to address water as an opportunity, but also building a global coalition on adaptation uh, to drive adaptation and climate action forward. In the multilateral space within the UN and so forth and so forth. It is all these projects, opportunities and interventions that we have to scale up and replicate. This is what I did with Rebuild by Design in New York. This is what I'm currently doing in Asia with the Water as Leverage program a program designed to overcome climate-related challenges, uh, focusing on three cities in Asia, uh, Chennai in India, Kuma in Bangladesh, and Samarang in Indonesia. Looking at all water-related challenges, uh, well, why, where they build up in these hotspots, where all these challenges come together, we also have the opportunity uh, to deliver uh, and uh, develop uh, projects that are catalytic, that, uh, can be implemented that are connecting all these needs and interests, but are also aspirational and inspirational. But six teams we work in these cities, uh, and I highlight one, this is Chennai, where we move the city from a current scarcity system where there's an abundance of water, but it's leaking out of this urban system, uh, polluting, using massive amount of energy and increasing our carbon footprint to a closed-loop circular system where we with nature-based solutions, eh, investing in historic uh, infrastructure, creating new infrastructure that is based on this culture, investing in forestry, in wetlands, in bioswales, in uh, rivers and canals, but also mixing solid and liquid waste for revenue streams and adapting our infrastructure, uh, housing and buildings. These projects not only mitigate the risk of climate change and adapt for a better future, they take many boxes of the Sustainable Development Goals, are really holistic and comprehensive and set an agenda that we can replicate and scale up across the world. We start with a pilot on the school level and from that pilot scale it up across Chennai, across Tamil Nadu, uh, Nadu and across India. In all three cities we work the same, building that capacity that we need. Uh, for fixing our infrastructure uh, and building an enabling environment to really address the needs on the ground. Uh, is this enough? Is only one example? No. 
We have to step up, scale up and replicate all these type of efforts. We have to put our money where our heart and our minds are. It's not easy. There was no silver bullet in New York. There is no silver bullet with water as leverage in Asia. We have to look at water as an enabler for sustainable development, as the leverage uh, for making a difference. Secretary General Guterres says we have to step up our efforts now. And I couldn't agree more. We have to change course now. Uh, not for me, but for future generations. Uh, I end with these two little girls. One has a cap and it says future doctor. She has three reasons why she wants to become a doctor. One, she wants to go to school and learn and become a real professional. Second, uh, she wants to care for people. Eh? It's amazing. She cares for people and she wants to make that her profession. But thirdly, she believes that there is a future where it's worthwhile taking care of people. Thank you.